dumbbell is probably one of my favorite exercises because it's a great full body workout. You're really using all of your muscles. Crawling is great exercise for your core, for your shoulder girdles, for your hips. Today I'm going to tell you why you should be practicing crawling. best thing to do is to start in a crawl position with your hands and your knees on the ground. Crawling can be part of a total body workout and it's something we forget how to do as we age and start sitting behind desks all day at work. Crawling is the foundation for human movement. People crawling around the ground. Crawling exercises certainly pose a striking image. Crawling fires up muscles many people haven't used in years. There are many benefits to the bear crawl and other locomotive exercises like it. Understanding how our bodies are meant to move and returning to those basics. So it's an absolutely wonderful exercise. Hello, welcome or welcome back to today's movement sequence. A movement session, a crawling makeup session for grown-ups. And let's see where that will lead us, what benefits this holds in stock for us. We will start on all fours, so please come on all fours, your hands and your knees. And as always, please make yourself as comfortable as possible with the instructions given. Maybe double up the carpet or come onto your fists or elbows and just get the most comfort. Comfort is a prerequisite for learning in this kind of sense, movement learning, and, and feel how you're on. So hopefully there's no pain. And, then, uh, and if there's no pain, if you're kind of comfortable on all fours, you can start to feel where you have your weight. If the weight is evenly distributed on all fours, so 25%, a quarter of your weight on each limb. Or, or not, is it? Do you have more weight on your right or your left? or more weight on your knees, or more weight on your hands, and start to play with this idea to shift your weight to either side, to the left, forwards, backwards, or to the right. So I'm asking a lot of questions and, and, and feel your support from your hands. Do you, have you been walking out a lot forwards or or are your hands more close to your knees and, and play with these different positions and, and, and feel how each position feels like. And maybe put your knees closer together and your hands closer together or your hands further apart and your knees further apart. So to, to find, what does this mean? What makes you more stable? What makes you more unstable? which gives you more possibilities for movement and which less. And so this first movement I'm suggesting, bring your behind, your sit bones, if you stick to the skeleton, closer to your heel, to your heels, to your, yes, the heels, the, the heel bone. So your sit bone closer to your heel bone. So bring your behind backwards to sit a little bit backwards and then come up again. So in this movement exploration, see if you have a preferred side. So come with your buttock closer to your left heel over your left lower leg and then come up again onto all fours and, and, and do this a couple of times to come back to the left side instead of the middle. Or alternately, come back onto your right heel on the right side and you might feel one side is better for the lack of another word. So what could we, see, what could we say instead of better? Could we say easier? It's easier to come down on one side than the other apart, of course. Let's assume both knees work equally well still. And it's not a matter of the knees or the hip joints, but what is it? Which side is more, more easy, more? prepared to, you're more prepared to come to sit onto your left heel or your right heel. And maybe that's got something to do with side bending, maybe, or weight shifting to one side or something else altogether. So which side is it? Where, where do you prefer to come back to? And, and from there we could 
come to sit on the heels and then all fours again if that still works if that if that's something the knees and the lower legs can do but you don't have to go all the way back but our interest of course is in the movement itself from all fours towards sitting on on either side left or right and we could go in many directions with this video with this lesson we could sit to one side or the other but i want to continue to crawling so take a rest and come to lie on your front side we will continue this lesson we'll pick up from the previous i don't know three or four lessons maybe three lessons on the belly pick it up from there and instead of from coming prone to side sitting we will have an alternate alternate a different ending today so the next movement the starting position for the next movement is on the belly please please come to lie onto your belly and then when you're on your belly stand your right hand and close to your right shoulder and your left hand close to your left shoulder and have your head turned to the right so that's our starting position and then slowly lift your head and turn your head to the left and and rest your head on your right cheek the head turn to the left and then lift it again and turn it to the right and do this a couple of times And if you have followed my videos for a while, you will notice a connection to the legs, to your buttocks. Like when you lift your head, maybe you can feel the tension in your legs. Your legs can support the lifting of the head and also how far you lift the head, how the movement distributes through your entire self, how you change your leaning on your front side and also how far you translate your head to the right and to the left which means how far do you bring your nose closer to your right hand and to your left hand and you can start to exaggerate that movement a little bit so whenever you place your head on the floor place it a little bit more to the right or more to the left and take rests in between so take these rests seriously to really um, let go of the tension in your upper body just to come to fully rest on the floor on either side and then start a new movement a fresh movement to lift the head to turn the head to side bend and to bring your head down again all right so let's change this movement for a bit take a short pause on your front side and only stand your right hand and the left arm you can rest extended downwards and rest your left arm next to you so to speak and uh, start a movement where you draw up your right knee on the floor towards your right hand so you pull or draw your right knee up towards your right hand and then push your right knee downwards 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 again until your right leg is extended again and do this again so you pull up your right knee towards your right hand 
or alternately you can think of your right foot to bring your toes closer to your right hand the toes of your right foot closer to your right hand and then down again to extend the leg and take a full rest on your front side and then start a new movement so we have already done this for like eight or ten video lessons to push the floor with your right hand and then draw up so this is new draw up your right knee towards your right hand and you can work with your foot and with your flexion and extension and then extend your right leg again until you're fully on your belly again and then start the movement again and let's add one more ingredient so instead of just drawing up your knee bring your forehead or your nose closer towards your right knee so you draw up your right knee towards your nose in this case or to, towards your eyes or towards your forehead right knee towards your head and your head towards your knee So your right arm is like an arch, like in Utah, USA. These huge arches, red color, sand color in nature. And, and or like a tunnel, a bridge, and your nose meets your knee, or at least they come closer to each other under this bridge of your right arm. And then extend yourself slowly slowly extend yourself until you're on your front side again and where do you point your fingers to how far do you have your right hand away from your shoulder how much do you turn your how, you, how much do you pull your right shoulder backwards how much do you turn your pelvis how much do you flex your spine how close do you want to bring your knee towards your face or your face towards your knee and what moves first what moves last all questions questions which help you to get a grasp for this movement which help you to improve this movement to prop these properties of movement these questions you could ask yourself or maybe don't ask anything and just trust in the movement sequence I'm like a baby in a world without words in a world purely of the senses And you might notice if you do this slowly enough and take enough rest, this becomes easier and easier. And then the next time you're on your belly, please turn around to the other side and explore the same thing on the other side. So stand your left hand and have your head turned to the left, resting on your right cheek or your right ear, however far you can turn your head to the left and draw up your left knee and extend your left leg or draw up your left foot towards your left hand and then extend your left leg or let's add in the head bring your face or your nose closer towards your left knee underneath your left arm let's explore this a little bit I will do this on the left side I cannot face the camera on the left side but I will explore my left side and you also and let's do this for a couple of movements.
And then whenever you want or whenever you finished your explorations, maybe you're already finished or maybe you're at it, turn around and come to lie on your back. Or at least I come to lie on my back. But I invite you to do the same, to rest a little bit on your back and just feel how, you're, how it is now to rest on your back. But don't get too comfy. <laughs> so that's a contradiction to what I first said. Don't get too comfy. Like don't let all of your body tension dissipate because we have to go back onto the belly again. So let's do this. Let's not get too comfy on the back. Come back onto your belly, please. And let's stand both hands. Yes, let's do this. Let's stand both hands. And if you participated in one of my last classes, so we do the same movement to lift your head. So have both hands standing and lift your head, lift your head, lift your head and bring it down again. And in one of the last classes we had the knees bent, if you remember, the knees bent and we spend quite a time to come up to side sitting, to lift the head and let the legs drop to the side. So we won't do this today. We will have a different, we will now take the path less traveled or the, the road not taken. That's the name of the poem, I think. So we will take the other road <laughs> today. <laughs> so instead of that, start with drawing up your right knee again. Your right knee up, but lift your head just the same way. But instead of meeting your right knee underneath your arm, lift your head to look over the right arm, to look over the arm to your knee. So how best to describe the movement from lying so the hands are standing somewhat then lift your head to look at your knee and at the same time the right knee draw up your right knee so of course you use the hands to push yourself away from the floor but it's not just the arms like if you remember when you were three months old or five months old your arms strong like the arms of a little ninja turtle but not that strong so the work of the back extensors to discover the extension is part of a prerequisite to be able to walk later to be able to lift the head by the means of contracting your back uh, to explore this relationship is of course uh, something that needs to happen before you could sit before anywhere, any human because we have to learn everything. We come to the world and we cannot jump, we cannot run, we cannot play chess, we need to learn everything. So lift your head to, and draw up your knee and you have to do that, you have to coordinate these movements to look at your right knee. <laughs> but you can already see the crawling that's st starting to happen so lift your head and see how much you can do with your back to lift your head and at some point you have to roll your pelvis it's like a scissor movement your like <laughs> your legs open like a scissor you lift your head and you have to find the right moment and the right coordination and then something will happen. It will suddenly start to feel easy. So look for this hint. Like we look for light in the darkness. It's easy for us to see the light. So look for this ease, easiness, where what do we have to move first because we, we are built for this movement. Our whole anatomy, the, the bones, the tension, everything. It makes this movement easy and possible if we, if we just find the right pathway, find the right hand position, find the way how much do you have to side bend, how much do you have to roll the pelvis, how do you have to separate your legs to draw up the knee and look at your knee, how many hairs on the knee <laughs> and, and then back down again. 
Did, so do you find this easy path? Do you, do you, can you find this ease where, where this movement is easy? And then, and then, of course, of course, over to the left side. So, the same movement. You start on your belly with the hands somewhat standing and lift your head. Start with lifting of the head. You lift your head, you lift your head, but then, but then you have to side bend, you have to roll your pelvis, you have to scissor your legs to draw up your left knee so you can look at your left knee and maybe the left side feels like completely, not completely, but very different from your right side. Maybe one side is easier than the other. And why? What do you do different? So maybe it's a structural thing. Through years of use, we changed so much that the sides are not the same at all anymore and they don't function the same anymore. Maybe one side, side bends much lighter than the other. Uh, maybe some side can roll better. So, so what is it? And, and what do you have to rediscover, undo, redo to be able to do this movement on the left side just as good or better than on the right side? And, and start with the lift of the head. So the head lifts and then and then the head is up in the air and then the body needs to do something, the torso needs to do something, the, the pelvis, the, the knee, the, the, the legs, the, something needs to happen so you can gracefully come up further. And then of course and of course, what is the next step? The next step is to do the same thing to the right and then to the left, to the right and to the left. So alternate, alternate these sides. Lift the head first, then draw up the right knee to look at the right knee or to look into the room and then back down again on the belly, over to the left side. Okay, then we need a rest. Please come to rest on your back. And then we need to continue the sequence. Please come onto your front side again. On your belly with both your hands standing. And take a moment to be on your belly, both hands standing, the head resting, so there's no stress. Think of your long spine, your breathing. And slowly, slowly start to lift your head and draw up your right knee further, further until you can sneak your right knee un underneath, underneath where? So you're on top of your right leg. And so, in fact, you're already sitting on your right leg in this position and then 
lengthen your right knee again, come back down again. So it's the same movement like before, just take it a little bit further. Lift your head, draw up your right knee, but draw it up more, 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 more until you're on your right knee. So you have to shift your weight to the, onto your right leg. That's almost like the pigeon pose in, in yoga or in Feldenkrais, they call it the scout pose or we call it the scout pose. And then back down again. And also try it on the left side. So have your head turned to the left, draw up your left knee, and draw it up more and more and more until you're sitting on your left leg. And back down again. And you will notice it's not a straight movement. There's a lot going on. The pelvis swings to the side, it rolls, one leg bends, the other one extended. The, the head travels quite a bit from the left to the right. So try the right leg and the left leg. Look to the right, draw up the right knee, come to sit on your right leg and then down again and to the other side and, and really take use of this huge movement. So it's like, it's like a, <laughs> I don't know any comparison. It's like you move from one side to the other, like a, I don't know, a rhinoceros rolling in the mud. <laughs> Is that a good image? Or... Um, uh, what, what other animal enjoys rolling? A cat, a slim little cat, when they roll on their back. <laughs> I don't know. Um, to roll and to sit on the right leg and down and to roll and to sit on the left leg. Yes, and from there, of course, you could just draw up your left knee and be in sitting again. It's a huge weight shift. The pelvis, it's like a big pendulum, swings from one side to the other to make room for this movement. And down again. Up and down. So lift your head first, draw up your knee until you're on one leg and then draw up the other leg as well. So you're on all fours and the same way, find the same way down again. So don't cheat your way to the floor in, in, in a mindless movement, but find the same weight shift, the same, like the same things, the same pathway, the same, everything you did to come up to sit on your legs, reverse that to come back down to lie onto your belly. <laughs> and change from one side to the other. Is this starting to get easy? I, I hope so. And, and if not, then then you're skipping something. You're, you're trying to go too fast or you're using too much power because of course now as a grown-up you have a lot of power. Uh, power baby's leg and you can <laughs> skip things. A baby could never skip because they have to go through the right technique to do it. And, and to feel, to feel what is easy and <laughs> and of course, if you're looking for the, it's not, this is not cheating. It's like really looking for the easiest opening and, and go there and go there and go there and go there. And then the, the overall movement, of course, will result in, in the path of least resistance. And that's, that has its honors in this kind of sense. And you're honoring your brain and, and your structure and yourself and, and maybe our legacy as a human over the millions, millions of years of our evolution. 
<laughs> to, to honor the path of least resistance. And from there, from all fours, of course, we could start to walk forwards and backwards to explore the, the actual crawling movement. And so we are looking more at the beginning of this movement, how to come from the belly onto all fours and, and how to go back down again. <laughs> yes, so does this work for you? Is this fun? Does this feel light? Does this bring up a, a lighter mood even? <laughs> a makeup session. Things, we, we learned this once, uh, not everybody has been crawling and, and like this, so we can either make it up, make up for that what we did not do or have a revisit the, the thing and become better edit and see how this will translate then into walking for example if we need it for running or just for walking around and then when you are sitting on your heels of course I had these extensive videos already about the lunge and how to weight shift to stand one leg and then to come up to standing actually and, and so this, is, this was a missing part, this video. How does this connect from coming from being on your belly to being on all fours and come into the lounge and come up to standing and all with the same swinging motion. Maybe let's try this together. So start on your front side and lift your head to come onto one knee and then the other and then up to standing and back down all the way to combine so this is like a whole this is so this is like a complex movement because it consists of so many different parts and in the end it's just one spiraling up to come to stand or spiraling down to come to lie on the belly in one fluid motion of course with your shoulder girdle in counterbalance to your pelvic girdle <laughs> so, I hope you like the ideas in this lesson and also see how it makes you feel for the next couple of hours, how it makes you walk, how it makes you move. If the movements you just did in this lesson affect all the other movements that you do in your everyday life. And of course, you can have a look at my previous videos, which all lead up to this one. So it's actually just a long sequence of movements going over since the last, how many years are we doing this already? Uh, or I am doing with you, uh, depending on how long you have been following me. And every video is like a piece in the puzzle of, of what? Of being alive, of moving, of enjoying movement, of enjoying being present as humans in this beautiful earth. So thank you for watching and let's get up to standing and then see you in the next video.
it's getting better and better. Just take some time to practice. And depending on what kind of learner you are, maybe you like me, you need your own, uh, not so, how do you call this? Like not supervised time where you can really be on your own and to explore on your own and to make discoveries. All right.